Okay, first step, don't panic. Let's go ahead and read this and take a look at what we can see. It says, write an arithmetic expression. Don't get intimidated. You'll probably just see the word expression on the GED, not necessarily arithmetic, but that's just me being specific that we're not going to see letters. It's arithmetic. We're only just going to see numbers and operation symbols. So we call those operands, but you don't need to know the word operand. You just need to know what I mean. I mean like plus, minus, times, divide. Okay. So when I talk about an expression, I'm talking about basically taking an idea, a concept. It could be an English phrase or it could be an English scenario and translating it into the language of math or language of symbols. Okay. So write an arithmetic expression to represent each of the following scenarios. So ooh, real word, word problems. Again, please don't panic. And then it says, do not simplify your expression. Now, this is what stresses students out. You guys want to simplify so bad, but I'm not asking you to like do the math as you think of it or find the answer as you think of it. I'm asking you to write out the procedure that one would take to find the answer in my language. That's what I mean by write an expression. Okay, so here we go. Fabio ooh, was swimming 53 meters below sea level. Okay, so here's my boy. He's swimming 53 meters below sea level. Hopefully he has a mask. Um, and let's see, if I'm below sea level, a good way to conceptualize that is as negative 53. And then he ascended 11 meters. There's a little vocab we better understand. Like if we don't know what ascended means, we'd be in trouble here. But to ascend is the opposite of to descend, right? It's to go up. So this dude is going up 11 meters. So he's ascending. He's going up 11 meters. And they'd like us to write an expression to represent his current depth. Well, that's actually pretty simple, right? We just talked about he's starting at negative 53. And he's ascending. He's going up. 11 meters. And there it is. That's the expression. Now, again, you guys want to do the math. You want to simplify. I don't want you to simplify. I just want you to say, this is what I would do if I were going to figure this out. And I want you to say that in my language. Okay. Mm. <laughs> That's writing an expression. Okay. We can do this. We can do this. Okay. Ooh, but I tried to scare you. Look at me. Word problem, writing expression, negative numbers, real life applications. What a jerk. But I'm a jerk who knows what the GED is like. They love mixing concepts like this. So we've got to be prepared. Okay, enough talking. Let's look at the next one. The temperature fell three degrees. Okay, the temperature fell three degrees. Okay, so that's going down three degrees. But notice that didn't just happen once. It says that happened each hour for four hours. Ah. Uh, Basically, this idea is if it happened each hour for four hours, it happened four times. So it dropped three degrees four times. Now they want us to write an expression to represent the total change, the total change in the temperature. Well, I know how much it changed at first. It dropped three degrees, but it didn't just do that once, right? It did that four times. There's a reason why we call multiplication timesing, or we say we're times when we talk about multiply. Okay, so I dropped three degrees four times. That's one way I could write that expression. You could also write it the other way around. Four times I dropped three degrees, uh, but the idea is to make sure those two numbers are multiplying. Now, you might say, oh my gosh, Kate, that's not the way I thought of it at all. Was I wrong? I thought, well, I'll just go down three, go down three, go down three, and go down three. No, that's a total, totally legitimate way to say the same thing. This is going down three, four times. Remember, one way to think about uh, multiplication is as repeated addition. Now, you might say to me, Kate, that's not really repeated addition. That's repeated subtraction. Well, yeah, it's like repeated addition of a negative number. I mean, literally, same difference. And so, you guys, the lines kind of blur between addition and subtraction once we hit negative numbers, and that freaks you guys out. But don't freak out. Like here, I'm saying go down three, go down three, go down three, go down three. And here I'm putting in the ands. Go down three and, <laughs> go down three and, go down three and, go down three. But they still mean the same thing. So look at that. 
four different ways I just came up with that I could have written the same expression. Now you, I love you guys. This is your question. And I mean, it's a good question. I'm not upset with you. But the question is always, but which way is the right way? And I'm like, yes, yes. Just like there's more than one way to say some things in English, there'll be more than one way to say some things in math. And then you get mad at me like, well, which one? Which one do I need to know for the test? And I'm like, yes. Yeah, sorry. You need to understand about equivalent expressions, different ways to say the same thing. And that's part of that math reasoning they're looking for you to build. And so if this came up on the test, though, you wouldn't probably be typing in the answer. You would be looking at multiple choices. So it would be super important, like, if you did it this way and this way was in the multiple choice, that you could go, oh, oh, oh those two things mean the same thing. Or if you did it this way and this was in the multiple choice, same thing. You need to recognize equivalent expressions. And I'm sorry if that makes you mad. Because you're like, well, that's so much to memorize. I'll explain once again. It's not a memory test. Sorry, guys. It's a reasoning test. We have to learn to speak the language. Okay, enough lecturing. Janet's bank account was at negative $17. Poor Janet. She must be a single mom. She bounced her account. I know how it is, Janet. You need to diapers. Okay, so Janet's bank account was at negative $17. And then her bank charged her three dollars $35 fees. Write an expression to represent her current balance. Okay. So they charged her, they charged her three fees. Okay. But they weren't $3 each. It was three times that she got charged $35. So that's one way to write that expression, right? She was at negative 17. She was at negative 17. And then they charged her three times. They charged her $35. Okay, we could flip the order around again with the multiplication. We could start at negative 17, and we could say that was a negative $35 charge three times. Don't really care. It means the same thing. Okay, now again, you could be the student who's like, oh, the multiplication with negatives is freaking me out. I just wanted to subtract. That's fine. I could start at negative 17, then I could subtract 35, subtract 35, subtract 35 again. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You guys are like, Kate, which way is the right way? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're all right ways. Or we could even start at negative 17 and then we could add a $35 charge and add a $35 charge and add a $35 charge. Okay. So a lot of right ways to say this. And why do I do them all when it makes you guys uncomfortable and you hate it? it not because I hate you guys, because you need to recognize equivalent expressions in the answers in life you need to be able to say, oh, they're saying the same thing I'm saying, just in different words. <laughs> All right. Okay. So don't panic. Ooh, let's clear this so we can, so we can have some space. All right. We got room to think now. So Felicity borrowed $1,041.45 from her father. Hmm, okay. I'm kind of already thinking, oh, I probably got some negative number going on if she borrowed that money. She owes it. But let's keep going to see what they want us to figure out. So she borrowed that to help cover the cost of a car. Okay. She agreed to pay him back. Ooh, interesting. Because look, she's agreeing to pay him back in equal installments. So, you know, I'm seeing these things. I'm just kind of thinking. I haven't been asked to like do anything yet. But when I heard about her borrowing money, I was kind of thinking, oh, it might be a negative number. When I'm hearing about equal installments, I'm auto automatically thinking, oh, we're doing something some number of times. So we're either going to multiply up to something or maybe we're going to divide something into equal size pieces. But that idea of equal installments made me start thinking, oh, I might be multiplying and dividing with negatives. Now, it, we see how many equal installments. It says she's going to pay equal installments over the course of 15 months. So this is 15 times she's paying this particular payment. Now, careful, I'm not saying we need to multiply. I'm just noticing she's doing something 15 times. Okay. Um, and let's see. So, ooh, I got lost. I'm going to start from the beginning of the sentence again. She agreed to pay him back in equal installments. Okay. Over the course of 15 months. And she sets up her checking account to automatically debit. Ooh, that's interesting language. I hear debit, I think negatives. So automatically debit the repayment each month. Write an expression to represent the net monthly effect on her account balance. Okay, now I finally know what I'm going to do. Okay, that what I'm looking for is going to affect whether this is add or subtract, negative or positive, divide or multiply. It's about what I'm looking at. Okay, so I'm looking for the net monthly effect on her account balance. Well, 
let's just start with the net effect on her account balance before we make it monthly. I know what's going to happen to her account balance as she pays this back to her father. Okay, over time, we're going to take out, we're going to subtract, we're going to remove, so negative $1,000. $41.45. That's the effect on her account balance. But careful, that's not the monthly effect. She's not paying that whole balance all at once, is she? We said that she was going to pay that back in equal installments. Okay, so I want to take this total, that's the total she needs to pay back, and break it into equal size pieces. Do you guys remember from the very first lesson, basic operations, how we break something into equal size pieces? Well, we divide, don't we? And you might say, well, what am I going to divide by? Well, how many equal size pieces are we looking at? How many times is she paying? See how I say we could use the word times, but it's not necessarily multiplying. It could be the inverse, the opposite of multiplying, dividing. If I want to take that total and break it into 15 payments or pay it over the course of 15 times, I'm going to have to divide it by 15. So I kind of ran out of room, so I'm going to rewrite it up here. So I'm going to take that total of $1,041.45, and I'm going to divide it into 15 equal size payments. And that's how much her bank account is account balance is going to be affected each month. Now, I know that temptation is there to actually do the division, but I just asked you to write the expression, so I'm done here. But I like this example because it kind of starts you to see how, why would we divide up a negative number that doesn't even make sense? Well, it makes sense to divide your debt into equal size payments, okay? All right. Oh, oh, just another question. Could you use a divide sign? Yeah, you could. You'd look like a third grader instead of a mathematician, but you wouldn't be wrong. Okay, so I'm not going to scold you. You can put divide by 15 and I'll still be nice to you. I'll still love you, uh, but I still recommend you get used to these fraction bars like we're going to do it in algebra so you don't panic when you see them. All right. Woo, man, do I feel like we just had a workout. Y'all might need a rest and some water, a little towel to dry your forehead after that workout. But congratulations, you did good work.